broadcasting live from Business Radio X. It's time for Coach the Coach. Welcome to Coach the Coach, helping business coaches deliver more impact in less time. If you're a business coach and want to help more people make more money and own your backyard, go to brxteam.com. Lee, this is going to be a fantastic segment. I cannot think of a better way to invest a Friday afternoon. Please join me in welcoming to the show President with Lead Your Story X. How are you, man? I am wonderful, Lee. A pleasure to be here. Pleasure, definitely. Well, before we get too far into things, do you mind sharing a little bit about Lead Your Story? How are you serving folks? Yeah, at the end of the day, I believe that the power of story, how we communicate, is fundamental to being able to grow a business, especially for coaches. If you go, co- if you go Google coach in Atlanta or coach in Charlotte or coach in California, you're going to find thousands and thousands of people who do what you do. But not many will be able to state or communicate your story the way that you do. So Lead Your Story is about finding a way to differentiate and tell a story that matters at three levels. The level of I, meaning you as a coach, how do you find a driving purpose? And the level of we, how do you tell a story to your team that galvanizes and brings people together? And then at the third level of us, as into the market, what story do you communicate to get people to believe that you are the perfect business or coach for them. Now, how did you get into this line of work? Um, have you always been kind of a coach yourself or a leader in, in this manner? Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the things that I focus on when we go through the process of helping coaches and consultants to lead their story is we start at the level of I, like who are you at your core? I, I'm from Oakland, California, you know, grew up during the height of the crack epidemic, and it was a very tough place to grow up. My brother was murdered, like all of the things that go with b- growing up in the inner city and being impoverished. And the one thing that I could always rely upon was my ability to speak and communicate my way out of trouble. <laughs> it was just like, it was just a knack that I had. I always showed up and I was able to communicate my way out of a sticky situation. And as a result, people listened. As a result, I was able to guide myself to go in a direction that uh, mitigated my risk, allowed me to become a first-generation college graduate, get an Ivy League degree, build my business, change the trajectory and landscape of my, my family generationally forever based upon my ability to communicate my story, what I was about, and what I was doing. And uh, coming out of college, starting a business uh, for work consulting, we help hundreds of businesses to grow in Southern California. And I transitioned from building businesses into building people and doing leadership development, team development, et cetera, and so forth. But the thing that united me building businesses or building people was I always focused on what's the communication strategy that matters? What is the story that we need to believe? And if we just did that, our talents, our skill, our ability will take hold and we'll be able to accomplish. But if we're not connected and grounded in this story, this foundation of how we communicate, then we aren't able to leverage those talents, right? So I've always been in this this space of communicating story and finding a way to get people to believe. Now, before a person or a firm hires you, what is the pain that they're having where they're like, you know what, I better call the lead your story folks? Um, the biggest one in, in the coaching space is how do I communicate my story? How do I find a way to tell people, this is what I stand for, this is who I am, this is what I do, and this is how life will be different by connecting and engaging with me. I think we're, we're in, 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 in timing on this too, Lee, I think we're, we're past the stage in our market where you can simply say, I'm great, right? Where you could just throw up a video, throw up a neat website that looks good, and people will look at it and say, oh, he is for me or she is for me. The biggest differentiator now is not to compete on product and price, which is exhausting and a race to the bottom, is to compete on purpose-based marketing, your story, your, 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 your collateral piece, the, 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 the basic coin that people trade on today is, do I resonate and connect with you at a belief level? So the problem is I need more clients. I need a way to differentiate. I'm having trouble. I, it's all this noise out there. How do I break through it? How do I cut through the noise? But even if you craft the perfect story, how do they 
how do people know what your story is? How do you help them get the word out? Well, that's the first part. So there's, there's three stages. Uh, the first part is to create the story and clarifying your message. Make sure your message is very clear because if you confuse, you will lose, right? A lot of coaches in, in our space, and I've been a coaching consultant for 20 years, uh, we, we, we try to say we serve everybody, and as a result, we end up serving no one. So let's clarify your message, get clear on who you serve, uh, tear away all the confusion, get simple again, here's the crux of what I do, and now let's tell a powerful story around it. Let's create the narrative and the story and the message. That's phase one. Once we have that, we have something to work with. Phase two is to capture that story. So we're talking about the, the mechanism of putting together your videos, putting together uh, your long for copy, putting together your blogs, your social media presence, et cetera, and so forth, so that you can capture that story. We help you to put that together. And the third phase is your communication phase. You've created a story and a message. You've captured it in a compelling way. Now let's work on communicating that through various channels, whether that's social media, in person, on the stage, on podcasting, wherever you are. How do you effectively communicate that story, that message, to the people who want to hear it in an effective manner? And that's phase three. Now, in the time that you have been doing this, do you can you share any stories of people that you were able to help uh, transform, maybe to create a better impact or get a better outcome than before they met you yeah, guys? Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, uh, one that comes to mind, uh, I have two 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 uh, stories that connect here. One is a is a coach consultant. She was a, a web developer, Ebony Looney, and um, again, in the space of I help people to build their businesses with websites but web developers have become a commodity. I can go on to Google, I can search, I can go on to Facebook, I can search, and it's a commodity field. Well, how do you separate? Let's get away from saying you develop websites and let's really get to the core of your story. And it turns out the core of her story was that at a young age, um, she didn't have confidence in herself, she was insecure, and she became obsessed with this idea of building or beautifying things. So we built this brand and this story around beautifying your brand and develop the business model around the steps of beautifying a brand and how that helps you to win business. Curtailing her market to specifically target the people that she was speaking to, which were African-American entrepreneurs, stop trying to win the world, stop trying to be everything to everyone. Let's get focused. Let's get clear about who you serve. And then she started to tell that story. Okay. I'm obsessed with making things beautiful. Why? Because I feel insecure right? Because I, I, I want things to, to stand for something in the world. And that's, that's my gift. That's what I do. If you're a woman entrepreneur, and you've been through trauma, you've been through issues, you feel like you're not good enough. And you want to make sure you put forward the most beautiful, uh, connective brand possible, then I'm the person for you. That story is fully and wholly different than I develop websites. And as a result, she was able to immediately start to increase her book of business because people were resonating with her at a story level, right? They started to believe in her purpose, her calling and what she was offering, not just the commoditization of a service or the utility and function of a website. So now if you were to look at kind of a bell curve of businesses, small to mid-sized businesses, what percent do you think are focusing in on just kind of the what they do instead of the why? They do what they do. Ah, I would say the greater majority. And I understand it. I, I've been in that place too. We're, we're trying to win business. We're trying to pay the bills. We're trying to move forward. And we're pitching product and price. I have the best product. Here are the features. Here's what it does. And here's the best price I can offer it to you. But if we really think about that strategy from a business perspective, that's a race to the bottom. It's exhausting to have the best product and then to offer it at the lowest price possible. And that is still the narrative that most of us move in because it's the lowest hanging fruit and it's the easiest for us to conceptualize and to become comfortable in a habit of doing. But again, it's a race to the bottom. When instead that, that 70, 80, 90% of the market is doing, those who win or at the top, they're building brand, they're building story, they're building something that says, when you do work with me, it's different. When you do work with me, we stand for something. When you do work with me, it says something about who we are, right? We, as in you, me, and the people who believe the same thing. That is brand. Um, and, and, and I'll give you an example. It's a crude one, but 
um, for example, let's take a, a Kia, right? A Kia and a Mercedes, for example. They're two capable cars. They get you from point A to point B, but Mercedes is worth a lot more. Or people pay a lot more, rather. Why is that? Well, because of the brand, because of the story associated with it. When I drive that, it means something about who I am. I identify with that brand, and because of it, I'm, I'm willing to pay a premium. As coaches, I believe our worth and our value and being able to capitalize on it is getting people to believe, to believe that what we have to offer, not the function of it, but the status and the, the, the identity, the deep stuff, if we can get them to connect there and to believe in those things, then we, we have an opportunity to trade on brand and not product and price. If you're just joining us, you're listening to Coach the Coach, helping business coaches deliver more impact in less time. If you're a business coach and want to help more people make more money and own your backyard, go to brxteam.com. X, Stone Payton here with Business Radio X. I've been listening in on your conversation with Lee. I'm finding it inspiring, invigorating, uh, and to be candid, a little bit challenging in some respects because I do think sometimes it's uh, much easier to lead with, with what than why. Uh, but I have a question of you. How do you mm -hmm. personally choose to define, measure, and, and make sure you're delivering real impact? Yeah, and that's a, that's a great question. And at the end of the day, um, focusing on the what feels like it, it, it creates impact and focusing on the why feels fuzzy. It's almost like, ah. But I, I tell people all the time and say, look, we're trading, we're trying to create belief. And that belief should lead to some particular outcome, some metrics are measurable. Is that belief, uh, do you measure it by way of leads coming in? Do you measure belief as in you're easing the way or your, your closing rate? Do you trade on belief, meaning that um, you're able to increase market share? There needs to be some very specific KPI, KPI um, at the end of it, some key performance indicator that says, hey, we've achieved. So, um, for example, with most coaches, that comes down to the bottom line. Am I making more money, right? Am, am, I, am I exhausting myself yelling at the market, or am I now showing up truly congruent, truly connected, being able to tell story and communicate, and now am I attracting people who not just believe in what I have to do, uh, what I do for them, but they believe in our mission. And I'll say one more thing here, too. Uh, I, back in the day when I first started, I used to fail because I used to deliver great service and then I would deliver it and then they would leave, right? And I'm like, why did, why did my clients leave? They say I made life-changing work with them. Why would they leave? And a coach mentor told me because if you help people to achieve a goal, um, they'll leave. But if you help them to embark on a mission, a journey, they'll stay. And that's the power of story too. So that KPI is could be also longevity with the client, repeat business, them staying loyal customers, not just because you're doing great work, but because you all are connected at the most human core basic level. We believe in the same thing and the same mission. Good stuff. Now, in your practice right now, can you walk me through what that onboarding looks like? If I'm just a new client or I hear, hear about you and, I'm, and I want to get started, what is that first conversation or the first kind of maybe discovery or the first uh, consultation look like? What are some of the questions you ask me? Uh, I'm asking you, what are your goals? I, 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 we try to start with the end in mind. What are the goals that you're trying to achieve? How many new clients? Um, are what, what specifically, exactly specifically and precisely does success look like for you? What is the transformation on the end of better communication and story mean to you? And that differs between clients. Sometimes uh, I work with a client that has nothing to really do with the business. They're trying to solidify their story internally on, on becoming more resolute in their purpose, their why. And if that's you, I, you know, I, I do the stuff, findmywhy.life, where we go through that process. For some businesses, it's, it's really finding the communication strategy and story to bring their teams together, their people. Like, how do you build a culture and the leaders? And then for some, it's, hey, how do I start telling a story that brings in new business? 
So um, we clarify the goals and then reverse engineer backwards. If you want these things, here are the things that I think we're going to have to do. We'll review your brand, we'll review your stories, we'll review your culture, review the things that are necessary to you being able to achieve that goal. And then we'll make an assessment as to whether it's a good fit for us to work together. And then um, when you're developing the story, are there kind of certain rules of story or is the story different for every individual? There are subtle nuances and context to the story depending upon your goal. But I'll give you a very rough cut of what a great story has. There are basically four basic components. And you want to think about this very simply. There's first a problem, a pain, and a pit. There's some challenging issue that someone is going through and it's causing them pain and it ultimately leads to them being in that pit. You know, in the movie or your or book, the hero or the heroine, she finds herself down and out and it's this, this darkness, this everywhere. There's no way out. She's about to quit and there's no hope. You need to be able to tell that story, right? All right. As a coach, when were you experiencing these problems, these pain, and describe your pit or your client's problems and pains in their pit? And then in that pit, there's the second phase of purpose, the realization of something beyond the pain, the realization that there's more to fight for, an epiphany and an awakening, right? You as a coach, you found some nuanced way to break out of this jail, this pit. Describe that. And then from there, you go from purpose, the lofty stuff, to the path to power. What powerful steps did you take? Action steps. One, two, three, four. I did this, this, then that. Tell people how you got out of the pit. And then last but not least, tell them the reward, the pleasure that you got out of it, both intrinsic and extrinsic, like right? the pleasure of, of the reward, the material prize, and also the pleasure of meeting your purpose. So in summary, four parts, problem, pain, and pit, first stage, second stage, purpose, third stage, uh, 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 path to power. And then the fourth is pleasure. Uh, you tell those four things in a great story, tell them in that order, you'll be able to tell a great story. Now, in your story, you mentioned that you grew up in a kind of a rough uh, environment and then you made it to an Ivy League education and degree and that catapulted you into kind of a, a new level of success. And you're, when you look back, can you kind of, in the teaching that you're doing now and the coaching you're doing now, how much of the lessons that you're imparting really grew up from the beginning you know, your, your origin story and how much of them came from the more formal education part? That is a, that is a powerful question. And I'm, I'm going to dodge it a little bit and say that it's in the middle. I believe that all of the experiences that we have been through and all of the pain, trauma, and challenges along the way, that there is a thread that unites them, that brings all of those things to a very specific narrative and story. So, me growing up in Oakland and, and experiencing the pain and trauma that I, I, I've gone through, and I share this with my clients all the time, these stories, and then me finding myself in this foreign environment and in, in, in an Ivy League institution to me being a first-time entrepreneur, to me jumping in a cage and fighting, uh, to me jumping out of airplanes, like there's a narrative and a story that connects to X. And ultimately, I understand my why. That's the level of I. So that why is united. Like for me, I can succinctly state my why. Like I exist to help people to fight through their biggest pain, problems, and fears so that they heroically break through. That's the core of who I am. So whenever I'm working with the client, they understand that. There is no like kumbaya. There is no hand-holding, no soft. And no, we are about to go tackle some tough stuff. And we're going to punch the monster in the face because that's who I've been the entirety of my life. And that's who I've always been. And I recognize it. So I trade on who I've been. And, and, and that is my strongest position congruently so, so I can live my story into my business. And so long story long, I think it's both connecting and finding the thread that unites. Now, is there any lessons we can learn from your story to help those people that are in that rough environment to give them kind of the courage and the strength to make the breakthrough that you made. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, this is, this is one of those things I I've, I've always grappled with. Um, I do a lot of community work. 
and going back and working with kids. I, I work in prisons. I do everything I can to give back because ultimately people say, hey, you know, let's be more like X. And I, I tell people, you know, that may not be the solution. What I would encourage someone to do, whether you're in a, an environment that, you know, there isn't a lot of resources or there isn't, you don't think there's a way out, or you're in a business that's struggling, or you're just somewhere that's not conducive to you feeling like there's possibility, I think the one thing I can always point to is creating clarity in your purpose. If you can find clarity in what it is you're aiming at and why you're aiming at it and what it's for, I think that gives you the resilience to ignore to some degree what's going on around you, to be the anomaly in the environment and to seek something different. And that is, is, isn't something I think um, a lot of people understand how to do. They, they, they try to go with the flow. You, you, to, to break away or to break through conditions that don't match up or aren't conducive, you've got to find a way to be the anomaly. And that means imagining, creating, and clarifying a purpose that, 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 that pushes you to fight through the friction of doing something different. Now, when you were growing up, there was that inertia of staying or being part of maybe a negative situation, and somehow you were able to catapult yourself outside of that. Is there anything that happened that was that kind of catalyst for you to kind of propel you outside of some of these maybe negative influences to get you into a different kind of uh, path? Yeah. You know, the, the short answer is fear. I think the best coaches and consultants out there, they are, they have grown up with a whole lot of fear. And, and, and let me give context to that. I believe that leaders and soldiers operate from a different perspective. My brother, for example, was murdered and lived that life was a soldier. A soldier takes the orders of their environment and what's around them and says, I got it. That's the mission. I'm going to go with it. I'm not going to question it. I'm going to run 100 miles an hour into it. A leader says, if we do that, we're going to fail. If I do this, I'm going to fail. There is pain on the other side of taking those orders that are coming from the environment. So we're fearful of what is to come. And as a result, we combat the friction of that existing plan to create a new one to go a different way. So, so fear Fear is the greatest motivator, right? Like, like becoming aware of what's on the other side of doing what it is that you're doing, like, like, and, and then making that the catalyst to doing something different. And that becomes kind of the coach's narrative and story. There was some pain that you have gone through, right? That then allows you to realize some purpose. And then from that purpose, you turned it into a passion to teach. And then now you turn that passion into profit as an ability to bring value to the world. So fear, straight fear, just fear, fear, fear is a strong callous and motivator and has been in my life. Um, and me being able to transform it into a message, into a story that helps others has been monumental in me not only escaping that environment, but also finding a way to build a successful business. Now, before we wrap, we ask every um, guest to share one piece of actionable advice that can help um, a coach kind of take their business either to the next level or to help maybe smooth the path for them in their learning curve. Maybe with you, we'll talk about story. If you were going to start out the very beginning and um, what's some, some kind of basics that a coach can do to help at, at least start thinking about crafting their story or some of the elements that, that they can start thinking about in creating a compelling story. All right. Uh, uh, great question. Um, actionable tangible, practical. Number one, sit down and evaluate your messaging in the market and ask yourself, is it clear? Is, is it super clear who I serve, what it is that I do, and how I transform lives? It has to be crazy dumb simple, crazy simple and clear. Now, the problem with that is that you're inside of your own fish tank and you can't you don't know that you're in water or you're inside of your own jar and you can't read the label inside your own jar. So typically you're going to need someone to from the outside in to, to really look at it and give you the, Hey, that's not clear. That's confusing. So first thing is make sure you have a very clear message. That's the low hanging fruit. 
clarify your message, make sure it is crazy simple to understand. And then from there, number two is figure out the story and narrative of how you're going to communicate how you've transformed your life and why you're a worthy leader and then how you've transformed other people's lives and tell that in a narrative form, right? Going through that story template that I shared at the, uh, in the show. So clarify your message first. That's low hanging fruit. You, I've had people who have clarified their message, go to their website. We work on clearing up their message, getting it clear who they serve, what they do, making it crazy dumb simple. And just that alone improves their conversion rates by 300%. It improves their ability to speak from the stage and close. It improves their ability to, to convey to strangers what they do, just being super clear. And then number two, when they, when they emotionalize this clarity with story, boom, that's the gasoline that allows them to build tribe, belief, and really be able to then build brand and therefore improve or increase their ability to charge a premium in the market. Good stuff, X. Thank you so much for sharing your story. If somebody wanted to learn more and uh, kind of join your tribe, what's the best way to get a hold of you? I go to leadyourstory.com. Um, or just Google Hassani X and connect with me on LinkedIn or Instagram. I, I'm usually always putting out some type of information or content that will be useful specifically to coaches and consultants. That's the space that I, uh, I focus on. So uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn, search Hassani X, give me a, a connection request. I'll accept it. And um, that's where I put out a lot of resources or leadyourstory.com to find out more about some of the services. Right. And that's Hassani, H-A-S-A-N-I space X, and then uh, you'll be able to find you on LinkedIn and leadyourstory.com is the website. Yes, sir. All right. Well, thank you again for sharing your story. We really appreciate it. Same here. All right. This is Lee Cantor for Stone Payton. We will see you all next time on Coach the Coach Radio.